Hello and welcome, Ariana here, online business manager and Kartra expert at Scale and Simplify. And in this video, I wanna show you how to create a broadcast, or rather a one-off email that you might use for something like your newsletter or some sort of promotional email that you're sending to your list or a segment of your list. So right now I am under broadcasts, which is under my communications. And then if we go up here to the communications menu, broadcasts. So just a quick differentiator between this and sequences. And I do have other videos on this as well. So make sure you check those out too. But in short, a sequence is a series of emails that you want to send sort of on a repeat basis. So anytime a specific trigger is met, like somebody opting into something or somebody making a specific purchase, that sequence of emails is going to be triggered and start going out to that person. Whereas broadcasts are one-off emails that you can send, and this is great for newsletters or even sort of promotions that you are running one time and it's not an automated repeat system. Using the broadcasts makes it a lot easier to view and set up those emails. So I'm gonna start by clicking on the plus broadcast button so we're going to give it a name. So here I just want to take a second and recommend that you come up with some sort of naming convention for your broadcasts. I like to use sort of a prefix and say newsletter for ones that are newsletters. And then the date, you can also do like newsletter and then the name or subject line or a brief descriptor of what it's about. Just something that's gonna make it easy for you to find that broadcast if you are selecting it from a drop down like this in other places in Kartra. Where that might come up is, for example, if you are wanting to select and find people in your, in your system who have or have not opened a specific broadcast, then just having an organized naming convention is gonna help you find that a little bit more easily. So I'm just going to call this one example. And then the other thing that you want to do is put it into a category. I like to have a newsletter and a promo email category at the minimum. So I'm just going to put this in the newsletter one. If you don't have any categories yet, you can click on manage my categories right from within here, create one, click add, and then done. And then it will be added in and you'll be able to then select it from the drop down menu. Again, this keeps things organized so that if you were looking for a specific email down the road, it makes it easier to kind of segment your regular newsletters as opposed to promotional ones that you are sending out from time to time. All right, so we're just gonna click create and we are doing this as an email. So I'm selecting email. I am assuming that you have integrated your email gateway and you're using Kartra, so just I'm leaving this as is there. Here you can also change your send from email if you needed to, but we are gonna leave it in the defaults and click save and next. And now we wanna select our recipients. Now you could do this in a few different ways. It obviously depends on who in your system you wanna send it to. For something like a regular newsletter, I like to have a list that's called newsletter subscribers. And people get added here kind of in various ways. And we do have other videos on organizing lists and tags and best practices for that, that you can check out on the YouTube channel. But this is one kind of simple way where you, if you have them on a list where you know they are all people who should be getting your newsletter, then this is the quickest way for you to be able to select those recipients. All right, so we are going to do this as a single email as I set up the actual newsletter as an example, but I just wanna to touch on the A-B split testing capabilities as well. So when we click on A-B split testing, we're gonna see that here it says A with the little envelope, and here it says B. So what we can do is under B, you can specify what percentage of the users you want email B sent to. So normally in a split test, we wanna do it 50-50 to start with. And what you'll see happens is that up here where you can't change this, but it will automatically change it based on what you have placed down here. So if we put 75%, it's gonna, or 74, it's gonna change this to 25%. Okay, so you would put in your email content here 
and your subject line split testing, I recommend, you know, testing one thing at a time. So you're going to, you know, have two different subject lines, for example, with the same content, or you might have some variations of the content inside of the actual email if you're testing for responses to, to something like that. So I won't go into detail about this, but those are kind of the basics of the split test. So moving on to the single email. Now we have two options here. We can see basic and advanced that we can toggle to. Basic is like this. It just has kind of the text editor. You can write in different text. You can insert an image, but it's not an ideal way to do it, at least not in my opinion. So I'm gonna to toggle to advanced and show you some really cool things that you can do in here. So I'm going to just put in a subject line so that it'll let us go on and preview. So the preview, the text that you put in here, this is what goes kind of in somebody's email inbox. It will show them this text next to the subject. If you leave it blank, it is going to show them the first few words or sentence of the email. It pulls that in as the preview, but this one allows you to control it as to what they see before they even open the email. All right, so first we have a few things across the top here. First is how you want the email to be aligned or justified within sort of the email space in somebody's browser. So this is essentially how it goes. So whether you want the email to be left justified where everything you put is gonna be on the left side of their screen or centered is kind of more central in their email window. Hopefully that makes sense. I like to use the centered one um, just because it gives it a really nice view. You can also specify the background color of the actual email. I like to keep this as white because it's easier to read. And then there's also canvas background. So that's where we can see here it's gray and that is essentially going to be the, the color of the space if, if you're using the center align. It's gonna be the color of the space to the left and right of that email. So I'm also gonna change this to white because I like having the open white space there. So on the left-hand side now, the first thing we have here is the dynamic variables. This is where you're going to put pull in these tags that are gonna pull in that person's name to personalize the email. But before we can do that, we actually wanna go into design templates and pull out some components into the email so for example, I'm going to start with text. Okay, so now we've got a text box. I'm gonna go back. You can have a headline. So this essentially just allows you to kind of format things in a bit of a different way. I'm gonna go back. You can explore these. There's content, it's kind of different. I, I think of them as chunks of an email. Um, the builder in here is not as customizable as the drag and drop in the page builder, for example, in Kartra. And so what you need to do is drag out sort of pre-built chunks that you can work with. I'm gonna go back. You can add in buttons, you can add in videos. There are some headers if you wanna put you know, a header with your logo or with social media icons. And you can explore some of the other elements here as well. So I'm gonna delete this and we're gonna say I'm creating sort of a simple email here where we can fill in the information. Now, one of the things that I really love when you're using the advanced version of the email builder is that you can actually save it as a template. So what I like to do is have a footer area of my email set up as a template where I will show you in a second. If you go to the design templates and scroll up, we have my templates here and these are saved templates. And so I've got this whole chunk here, which was something that, you know, I built like this and then you click save as template. Okay. And then now it shows up in your, in your templates up here. So I've done that previously 
and I'm just going to drag this out to show you what you can then do. So it drags it out as a template, but it's still its individual components that I originally built out. And so I'm able to then remove pieces or add pieces as I would like working off of that original template. Okay, so we've got our newsletter here as an example. You can also click on full templates where you can pull out completely pre-built and pre-designed templates if you would like. And you can explore those in there as well. All right, so we've got our simple email here. The last thing that I'll mention is when it comes to your templates, it's, it's good to build in a bit of a footer text area that you can include in all of your emails and saving it as a template makes this really easy to make sure that you have consistent wording in all of them. So for example, it's good to have a disclaimer as to why they're receiving this email and where they may have signed up for it because what's going to appear underneath this and where you, you can't change the settings on this is there's going to be the unsubscribe button. And so it doesn't have space for you to put in any text as to describe to people what will happen if they click the unsubscribe button and what their options are. So here you can kind of remind people how they opted in, why they're receiving emails from you. And if they click unsubscribe below, that they can have the option to unsubscribe from one or different types of your emails there. Okay, so I'm just gonna click save and next. Okay, so now we have automations. This is not a necessary part of this, but I'm just gonna show you one thing that you could do. And so you can do a series of different things based on whether or not somebody opens, does not open an email or clicks on a specific link. So something you can do is if you want to track people who have clicked on a particular link in that email, you can click add. You're just selecting the link that from the drop down, and then you can say assign a tag and assign a tag to them, for example. And there are multiple other things that you can do as well. The other thing that you can do is if they open the email, you can choose to assign points. So what I like to do sometimes is to set it up as give points and then we do 10 points where they expire in 180 days. So this is something that you can kind of build in to all of your emails and have as a standard automation because what will happen is you can kind of gauge by the number of points people have, how much they have been opening your emails in the last 180 days. So again, not mandatory, but just I wanted to share a few ideas of different things that you could do with the automations, and this is attached to that specific email. Okay, and finally, you can choose to either send it the email immediately, save it as a draft, or schedule it for later, where you would select the date and time and hit schedule. So I'm going to leave this one as an example in the draft. All right, and that is it. I hope that was helpful. Make sure you hit subscribe so that you get notified of our upcoming new tutorials as they are released. And check out the description below where you can find free resources as well as plug and play cartridge templates that you can import into your account right now. Thanks for watching.